2024 marks 10 years since ISIS's genocide against the Yazidis in Sinjar and other communities in Iraq. 10 years on, the wounds of the Yazidi community in particular remain fresh, as thousands of women, girls, and men that ISIS kidnapped remain missing. Hundreds of thousands of Yazidis remain displaced, and the families of the victims and the entire Yazidi community await justice for the heinous crimes of ISIS. Much of Sinjar is still destroyed. The district is challenged by the competing armed forces and groups and the domestic and political rivalry that is taking place there. The complexities of Sinjar cannot be exaggerated. The, these complexities have obstructed justice and rebuilding the area. They obstruct and they continue to challenge governance, security, and peaceful coexistence. Governments, organizations, civil society, and other community leaders have tried to help Sinjar and its people to recover from genocide. There has been progress, but it remains modest compared to the wounds of and the needs of the Sinjar and its people. By design, ISIS implicated members of different tribes and communities against each other to sow the seeds of division. As a result, Entire tribes and communities were accused of the crimes committed by some. This occurred in Sinjar, Talafar, Tikrit, and elsewhere in Iraq. In addition, communities seek justice and reparations for damage caused during the military operations to liberate uh, the areas. Given the expertise of the U.S. Institute of Peace in Iraq and in peacebuilding, the government of Iraq and community leaders over the years sought USIP's assistance to prevent communal violence, bridge community-community and community-government relations, solve problems through uh, dialogue, and promote peaceful coexistence. USIP and its partners led dialogues among tribal and other community leaders from Salah Haddin and southern provinces after the Camp Spiker massacre of 2014, also among community leaders in Hawija, southwest of Kirkuk in 2015, and in Nineveh Plains and Talafar after them. Over the years, we were asked if we could facilitate dialogue in Sinjar. We assessed multiple times and concluded that the complexities of Sinjar do not allow for success and may cause harm. We were certain that we cannot cover all of Sinjar's areas, actors, and issues. We did not intervene. However, community leaders continue to report to USIP that communal tensions continue to exist. There is a lack of trust. A crime against an Azidi is blamed on the Arabs. A crime against an Arab is blamed on the Azidis. Community divisions um, were exploited politically and were causing more harm. These all indicated that despite the fact that Azidis, Arabs, and other communities coexisted in peace before, ISIS has clearly caused damage that they needed to be addressed. Given the ongoing request to USIP, we selected Northeast Sinjar because it represented the least complex part of a very complicated district. We thought if dialogue cannot succeed there, it would be even more difficult in other places of Sinjar. The preliminary steps indicated that USIP's approach may bear results, but progress remains slow. Along the way, we learned of limitations faced by other organizations who tried other approaches in, uh, and in other areas of Sinjar. Over the past year, USIP expanded the team to include its long-standing Iraqi partner, Al-Tahrir Association for Development, known as TAD, TAD, and other members of the network of Iraqi facilitators. The team, uh, implemented a five-phase dialogue process involving AZD and Arab community leaders from various parts of northern Sinjar. The initial phases of the process focused on the areas of Borak and Gohbal settlements along, uh, the neighbor, along with the neighboring villages, where AZD, AZD and Arab-Arab dialogues were facilitated. Through these dialogues, communities were clear with each other that they seek justice, not reconciliation, better services, um, and peace for their areas, not involvement in politics. They reached common ground and wanted practical solutions. Building on this success, the dialogue process expanded to include other areas in northern Sinjar, resulting in each community reaching common ground uh, uh, internally and with the broader community as well and establishing channels of communications. The dialogue culminated in the Northern Sinjar uh, Social Cohesion Agreement, which was signed by Azidi and Arab community leaders on March 30th, 
this year in Mosul. Among other things, the community leaders commit to rejecting violence and extremism, support state processes and institutions, and turn to a rule of law to settle differences and conflicts. The leaders also call upon the government actors to unify the administration and security configuration in Sinjar, rebuild their areas, and expedite compensation for those who lost relatives in the conflict with ISIS and during military operations. Senior officials from the federal government of Iraq, including the National Security Advisory, the National Security Service, and the Ministry of Migration and Displacement, as well as Kurdistan Regional Government, the provincial government and council of Minoa participated in the ceremony and expressed support to the agreement. The governor of Ninoa participated in the agreement signing ceremony and signed the agreement himself. في حسابات الدولة وأنا أمة المستشار يقلن لقومي في هذا الحديث المجرم سينال جزاء كان من كان اليوم أو غدا أو بعد غد ولكن البصل الحمد لله العراق الآن يتعافى ونينوا تتعافى وشمال سنجار يتعافى ونأمل أن نراكم في سنجار وفي شمال سنجار العراق بلد الحضارة بلد القانون لا نقول أحد الله عن المجرم ينال جزاؤه وفق قانون العراق ولكن لابد للحياه ان تستمر فنحن كحكومه محليه وبالتعاون مع الحكومه الاتحاديه وحكومه الاقليم سنبذل كل الجهود التي من شانها تقديم كل الدعم اللوجستي والخدمات الحقيقيه ونجير كل ما لدينا من أجل خدمة أهلنا من العرب واليزيديين والمسلمين في منطقة شمال سنجار There were challenges during the dialogue process and after the announcement. Uh, there are those who viewed dialogue and interpreted social cohesion to mean reconciliation, giving up the rights of the victims and uh, or giving up on justice or forgiving uh, perpetrators of ISIS crimes, or they say the signatories do not represent the people or the document does not um, include all the needs of Sinjar. The reality is the northern Sinjar leaders did not offer or request reconciliation. They were very clear that they do not represent the victims or all Sinjar. Bringing ISIS criminals to justice was always a top demand. Ensuring and expediting reparations for the families of the victims was another priority. Leaders from both communities agreed on the importance of ad addressing these grievances. And that's what makes this uh, process important, that both communities were in it together. Uh, the process was a community dialogue and finding common ground about community needs, uh, not a political dialogue or a political agreement. The leaders have shown incredible courage by participating in the dialogue process publicly and transparently, sharing what they pursued together, again, seeking justice together uh, for, for those who have lost family members, by providing a foundation to be built upon. In addition to dialogues, USIP has supported other initiatives like the Conflict and Stabilization Monitoring Framework to convey the voice of the community in Sinjar, including the Azidis and other districts of Ninoa to Iraqi government and international community to address the needs of the people. USIP hosted the Nobody's Listening exhibition at its headquarters office in Washington, D.C. The exhibition commemorates ISIS's genocide against the Azidis. USIP also hosted public discussions to remind at the 10-year anniversary of ISIS's genocide that the heavy burden of physical and social destruction that ISIS left behind is not done. Sinjar and the ongoing impact of AZD genocide require particular attention. Mm -hmm.